Big news this morning, two weeks from today, there's going to be two Republicans running for president. Nikki Haley uh, announcing that she is going to announce her run the day after Valentine's Day, February the 15th. She, of course, uh, former governor of South Carolina. For more on all this, let's welcome back in political analyst and best-selling author Mark Halpern and former Trump campaign aide and Newsmax contributor Rick Gates. Uh, great to have you on. Happy Wednesday. Uh, Mark, so Donald Trump about to have some company uh, in the field. Uh, he's the only one running right now. Two weeks from now, there'll be two. On the left, it's fascinating as well. So according to the Washington Post, if Joe Biden's not the guy in 2024, if he decides to, to step out of the race or not run or, or whatever, Democrats are apparently really concerned about Kamala Harris's political prospects. Um, what are you watching for as all of a sudden, you know, the 2024 field is starting to take shape? Well, on the Republican side, we're going to see a field of at least four, as many as 10, I would say. And on the Democratic side, we're either going to see a field of one or a field of 21. And on the, in Biden world, they're assuming he's running. He says he's going to run. And if he doesn't, most people around Joe Biden don't think Kamala Harris would or should be the nominee, but it would be a very messy race. And they put a premium on holding the White House. They don't want Donald Trump back in. And so there's a lot of pressure on folks to just rally around Joe Biden. Not a lot of confidence that Kamala Harris or any of the other Democrats who likely could win the nomination could win a general election. Yeah, Rick, it seems there could be a long list for Republicans. Uh, you know, Ron DeSantis is, is in that potential list. But Nikki Haley now the first to she will officially announce on the 15th. Um, she did say, though, a while back that she would not run if President Trump was running. Do you think that hurts her? And what type of chance do you think she has, especially being a woman putting herself in this race? Well, look, Nikki is very qualified. She uh, did a great job as a U.N. ambassador. Trump had a lot of respect for her. Um, I think it's a good decision for her to get out there. Her polling has been uh, kind of stagnant lately. So I think for her to get out there, start mobilizing resources, uh, watching what her message is, what type of endorsement she's going to get, it's very important. And I think that she could position herself, you know, possibly again for, you know, down the road. I don't think she necessarily could make it, uh, depending on how things roll out for the president. Uh, but she will be a, a, a serious contender as well. And I agree with Mark. It could be a very narrow field, depending on how people raise the money and, and get their messaging out. Uh, but on the Democratic side, I just wanted to say, it's not only that uh, the Democrats are looking at uh, problems for Kamala Harris as a potential presidential run, but there's also talk about potentially replacing her on the ticket as VP if Biden does run again. That's an issue that I'm, I'm really uh, going to watch for. Uh, yeah, they, I keep hearing that. They don't say who, though. Who would be a possible replacement? Somebody zero, from the zero, cabinet? Zero percent chance. You know, and I'm hearing, yeah. Mark, hold that thought. I'm hearing that Elizabeth Warren might not seek re-election in 2024 in Massachusetts for the Senate, that she's looking for maybe a, a cabinet post um, or maybe some other post. Maybe she'd run with Joe Biden. Um, why zero percent chance? It doesn't happen often. I'll give you that, Mark. Because Joe Biden is a, is loyal, it doesn't like to make change, and it would it would devastate his support amongst the base of the party. Hmm. Would really an annoy them. She's not going to be replaced. Uh, Nikki Haley, I'd point. like to see if she can, let's see if she can raise fifty million dollars or not. You don't need a lot of money to run for president if you're skilled with the media, and she's pretty skilled. But let's see as the scrutiny comes on her as she tries to get the endorsements Rick's talked about. Can she raise fifty million dollars or not? It's not it's not table stakes, but. It's an indication of the kind of support, including grassroots support. Yeah, Donald good, Trump good raises point. a lot of his money from small dollar donors. Does Nikki Haley have that capacity or not? I don't know. Yeah, if, if, yeah if remember, Joe Haley, Biden... Haley did not do a great job, you know, in 2016 when she ran, not even in her own state. Remember, she was defeated in the primary. So once you start, you know, broadening that national appeal, it'll be interesting to see how she plays in other states like Iowa, New Hampshire and Nevada. That's a good point. So if that's a good point, if Joe Biden's not going to fire Pete Buttigieg yeah. and Alejandro Mayorkas, I, I think you're safe in the Biden administration if you're uh, Kamala Harris. Um, let's talk about Ron DeSantis, uh, back to the Republicans. So word is that he's going to jump in maybe this spring, April, May, June. That's traditionally when candidates uh, uh, jump in. Um, Politico had some reporting uh, about Ron DeSantis' inner circle. And I thought this was fascinating. Uh, Rick, you were there. You were part of the Trump inner circle uh, when he was running back in 2015, 2016. So he won re-election by historic margins, stumped for candidates across the country during the 2022 election cycle, and is widely expected to run for the presidency. Yet DeSantis has relied on a remarkably small coterie of aides to help guide all that political activity. That is the Donald Trump playbook, Rick, is it not? 
Yeah, look, we had a very small team, you know, early on. And, and frankly, Ron DeSantis was in a much better position starting off than Donald Trump ever was. A lot of the initial grassroots support endorsements, we had very few endorsements going in, not until, you know, he captured the nomination. The thing that DeSantis's team has got to be weary of is that they are very good in Florida. But when you broaden that out to, you know, across the United States, there are a lot of other elements that they're going to have to start building those aren't built yet. The longer they wait, the more difficult it is for Ron DeSantis to kind of capture and, and catch up to Donald Trump. Yeah. To, to that, so to ahead, that end, to that end, while Rob was doing Wordle and eating donuts between segments with me and Rick, I was breaking <laughs> some news on Twitter, which is uh, Ron DeSantis, before he becomes a formal presidential candidate, assuming he does, he's going to be traveling around the country, testing his appeal outside Florida for his book tour. And one of the biggest events on that book tour, I'm told, is a Dallas event. I tweeted out the invitation to that Dallas event, sponsored by the local party there. He's going to go and give a big high-profile speech. And you can bet that the national media will cover that event and the other events on his book tour as if he is a candidate. And they'll be kicking the tires, along with donors and activists and strategists, to see, does Ron DeSantis have a Florida act or does he have a national act? Yeah. yeah. Although nobody's taking their act except Nikki Haley to Iowa, which has sort of surprised me. Typically, you Tim see Scott, people- Tim Scott's going to Iowa. Tim Scott's, finally somebody's going to Iowa. I think if you work at the Des Moines Register right now, you're like, where is everybody? <laughs> um, okay, Ron DeSantis, I thought this was interesting. Um, Donald Trump was criticizing Ron DeSantis about how he handled uh, COVID-19 back in the spring <clears throat> of 2020 when nobody knew anything about COVID-19. Take a look at this and just, to me, it's fascinating because DeSantis didn't seem to take the bait. Take a look. I roll out of bed. I have people attacking me from all angles. It's been happening for many, many years. And if you look at the good thing about it, though, is like if you take a crisis situation like COVID, you know, the good thing about it is when you're an elected executive, you have to make all kinds of decisions. You've got to steer that ship. And the good thing is, is that the people are able to render a judgment on that, whether they reelect you or not. All right. Rick, do you think he didn't take the bait, the, the bait because he's not officially a candidate yet? Because if he does become a candidate, this is going to get very interesting. Right. I mean, this is going to be a war of the words. Yeah, and Ron DeSantis is more aware than anybody of when he decides to cross that line and begin defending and attacking against Donald Trump, that he is going to be put in that position. I think that what he has done lately has been very interesting. He kind of takes the high road. He will push back, but he will rarely mention Donald Trump by name. That will absolutely change when he announces. But until then, he is going to take that approach, and he is going to try to appeal to those independents and moderates that certainly aren't necessarily going to support Trump. I also think, Mark, somebody needs to get in Trump's ear and talk about his nicknames. If he's going to go down that path again, he's got to get back to some of the gold that he was able to dig up in 2016. Little Marco, Lion Ted, Pocahontas. I mean, you can't you can't look at Elizabeth Warren and not, not think that. They were so effective. I don't think Ron DeSantis... Ron the sanctimonious, see? I don't think that's got staying I, but power. I, don't, I think the nicknames, I mean, we're, even though it's a few years, I think we're in a different time. I think Wait, he you needs don't think to, Trump's going to have nicknames? I think he needs to stay away from nicknames. Ron, Mark? I, he, he won't. Rick? He'll he keep workshopping. He'll keep workshopping. Uh, he won't, but should, they will build should, up over time. Yeah, yeah, the sanctimonious yeah. has been soft launched. I don't think it sticks. It's, I don't think it's good. Don't, don't stay tuned. There will be plenty more. How about, right. I'll just help, I'll just, I'll just offer one up. How about Ronald McPhoney? Maybe that'll work. Ooh, oh, Mark. All right, <laughs> Maybe. you heard it here Maybe. first. No, just, just kidding. All just. right. Mark Halperin, Rick Gates. <laughs> As always, uh, to be continued. We'll see you again. Have a Thank great you. day. Thank you. you too.